wraps up the, what we had. No, um, no, we have a little surprise for him. Don't oh. run away. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't forget. Oh, no. Uh, no, that's true. Welcome to Sparkling Harmonies. We're your hosts, Lily. And Francois. And we are two friends who don't quite listen to the same music or genres. But we are here to talk about everything and anything music related. Yay! <laughs> and today we've got uh, Julien Bienumer, our guest today. Uh, he is um, right now a Twitch streamer full time. Um, but uh, he lives. He's been living off music for the last five years. It's just the pandemic has really pushed him to instead of doing covers in bars, restaurants, events, festivals. Well, it kind of pushed him to do it online. Uh, he uses a lot of instruments to build up songs using loops and everything on Twitch. And so you should really go check it out. Um, he wants to eventually get into creating original music, but he's still kind of uh, looking into what direction he wants to go. So there's Julien, who's going to be here to talk about his streaming experience with us today and um, within the pandemic. Welcome, Julien. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. Thank you, you have anything else me. you'd like to add uh, to your uh, the mini intro that I just did? That was actually perfect. Uh, this is how I would <laughs> describe myself so far. So yeah, well done. Perfect. <laughs> so we're going to get into some get to know your guests questions uh, to start off. So what is the first album that you bought? Okay, so... I'll or be very honest song. with the, 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 the viewers right now because you send me those questions so I can get prepared for that. And the, the true fact is, um, like to most of the, like those are like questions so hard to answer, especially that one because I, I'm not, it, it's such a shame because I'm not even sure I ever really bought an album. Seriously? Maybe some like for, for, yeah, maybe for like uh, independent bands when I, I, I would get to shows. But um, mm -hmm. I like to be fair. I think my very first album that my parents bought me. I think I was eight, and I was not that much listening to music. So I wanted. I I think I wanted to be as cool as my friends. So I asked for my birthday a fifty cent album. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I think my father, for a joke, he just like gave me fifty cents, like literally. Oh wow. And didn't bought the album. And I think my mom bought me a the, um, Nelly album because my cousin told her like that was the music of the moment. So you, uh, you know that album with, uh, if you want to go and take a ride with me. Uh, <laughs> so I think that was the first album. Like it's either this one or D Natural. D Natural? <laughs> wow. Do you, do you know that, that artist D Natural from the like late uh, 90s? Yeah, like and cool when they come rapper. back in 2000 and they come back <laughs> like two years ago, the natural so Simono. Like, yeah, I, I know. Yeah, may I've, I I don't know why, but like those are probably the two first album I've ever owned. And um, but to be fair, then when I really got into music and really passionate about that, um, I would say probably a, a Blink 182 album that I like. It's Probably the first album I've listened to, like mm -hmm. fully. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be it. But like, like legitly buying an album. Oh, I I, I really don't know which one that, oh, that, that would have wow. been. That's interesting. Maybe <laughs> maybe it'd show our age or your age. I don't know. But. Yeah. Oh yeah, it shows a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is your most memorable experience with music? Um, I would say there are many. But um, when I play, um, yeah, um, lately I've been having a project with uh, two of my good friends um, that are from the city where I live or like nearby. And uh, we were doing like uh, this band where it's only pop punk covers from the like 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we play in bars, like from the city where we live, uh, it's always very memorable because like our friends are there and the vibe is like so cool. Um, so I would say probably those ones. I've been part of like 
some festivals, but like since I'm doing covers, I'm always like more doing either the first part or just like I, I, I'm I'm never and that's like just not more normal. But I'm I'm not like the the man even for right for that. So um, it's always super fun. Uh, but I think like small gigs are my favorites. Uh, and I'm, I'm with too, you on that. <laughs> yeah. When it's like too big and like, you don't really feel the. The connection. The connection. Yeah. With the people like that much. Um, mm-hmm. It's still super cool though, but uh, nothing beats like a vibe with more or less a hundred people that are like really into it and just vibing to the night and to the music. This is like the best. So I would say this is one of my most memorable. And lately, to be fair, when I started uh, playing on Twitch, mm-hmm. um, it felt super weird. But lately, um, I've been having memorable streams, which is okay, a thing I never cool. thought I would happen. But like, even though I don't see the people, I think there's something going on with the community there. And um, yeah, this is just yeah. like a next step for me. It's a new experience. And um and I'm pretty sure in many years I'm gonna say, yo, that that was memorable. So mm-hmm. yeah, but I, I watched two of your stream, like the Monday Hemo you did last Monday. <laughs> yeah. And yesterday I uh, listened to the first part of the, the stream you did. And we will talk about it later, but I, I, I think I get what you enjoy during those those performances. Okay, yeah. Be- because your community is really, really active. Like during the like I don't know maybe five first minute, I was alone when it, when you sent us the link. I clicked. I was probably the only one in the chat. <laughs> and after five minutes, there was like thousand and thousand of messages of people like say hello everybody hello wow. hey, how are you this guy yeah they're so welcoming that's like yeah. that's the best <laughs> they're the best. And so we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Right. But in the meantime, what is your guilty pleasure? Music, uh, I get music, musically, yeah. yeah. Um, guilty pleasure. <laughs> I, I, I'm very, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm kind of straight in what I listen to. Um, I would say probably like the pop punk music from when I was in high school. I okay. think like the music, I think that like, uh, the, the modern pop punk right now is really cool. But mm-hmm. uh, I feel very nostalgic about like, you know, those albums by um, like either All Time Low, Fall Out Boy or boys, even Boys Like Girls from like, <laughs> you know, like the early 2007 yeah. or 8. And I think the pop punk industry made it like a good path since then. Mm-hmm. But it's, I, I would say this is my guilty pleasure because of that reminds me uh yeah, when the I was nostalgia in part. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, I would say that that's my answer. Final answer. Okay. Nice. So you're, you're probably uh, more uh, close to Lily now with all yeah, that's, the... Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> well, all time. All the those. Boys Like Girls, that's a band that I haven't heard of in a long time. I haven't listened to them in a long time either. Yeah. <laughs> so if we go fast forward to today, who is your artist of the moment? Oh, it's such a hard answer. There are so many. Uh, I mean, like, I love Bon Iver, like the, the folk vibe, Ben Howard, Ziggy Albert, um, so many good bands there. And if I go back to my roots, like the m- most modern pop punk, lately I've been listening a lot to The Story So Far, mm-hmm. State Champs, Neck Deep, those kind of bands. Um, I love reggae music so bad too so like to give you like a more specific answer this week was a very beautiful week here in quebec it was hot sunny yes. so i was doing longboard and listening to the story so far so that would be like my today's answer but i'm really really moody with the um, the temperature the weather okay. so that would highly influence what i'm listening to so today on this rainy day who would it be <laughs> Today, I was listening to um, some streamers on Twitch. So this is my, my, my new thing. Instead of listening to music all the time now, I kind of split it and I listen to like music streamers as well. But I think my mood, today's mood would, would have been probably Bon Iver, Seed in Color, 
or okay. mm-hmm. something like that, I guess. Okay. And what is your song of the moment right now? Or songs? You can cheat because um, Francois and I have multiple songs yeah. this week. Oh. <laughs> we cheat. We cheat a lot. We always cheat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's pretty much the same. Then I, I, I would highly cheat on that question. But um, <laughs> go ahead. No, cheat I'll away. try to give you uh, my answer of the moment. That would be probably the song uh, Clairvoyant by the story so far, which is a acoustic song of theirs. Mm-hmm. And okay. lately I've been playing this on, on my stream and I've heard another streamer playing it. And I really love the melody of that song. Uh, okay, I'll have to but, check it out. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that would be today's answer. Tomorrow I would have answered something else. <laughs> but yeah. That's part of the game. And Francois, what have you been listening to this week? So I, I cheat too, so I have two. <laughs> it's okay. We go for one, two, and I have three. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, I discover a girl called, sorry, but Sydney Gish or Sydney Gish. It's a G-I-S-H. Mm-hmm. Um, I discover by YouTube, uh, like you may also like, and uh, I'm pretty sure YouTube suggests me that uh, artists because I really enjoy to Courtney Barknet. There's really like the same uh, vibe. It's like mm-hmm. a grunge meeting uh, Bob Dylan. So it, it's it's not it's more a story than a song. So each song is about someone or an event or it, it's not really like a, a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Or okay. there's no repetition. It's like oh, I'm going to a party and look what I see. And the girl just walking in the home and tell you everything she saw during the party Hmm. and stuff like that. And I really enjoy that. So this is my first one. And the other one is a band called Lion Daughters. Uh, It's it's probably the best getaway band if you like Rammstein and you want to get into mellow debt because there's a lot of melody. There's a lot of synthesizer and piano, but you, you, you taking a first step into death metal. Uh, for example, I show Lily one of the new songs and she's like, I really enjoyed that one until the it beginning. starts singing. <laughs> yeah, until, <laughs> until it starts singing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the melody was good. Yeah, but it, it's a mellow death band. So yeah, there's melody, but they have a new album out called Skin Show and I really enjoy it right now. So what about you, Lily? Um, so... For me, there's two that are from Man's Side. So, Julien, if you have listened to any of our episodes, you'll know that I listen to like the same four bands, three <laughs> bands. Um, so the over first one right again. now. <laughs> is, uh, so they're different. You know, you say you're moody with the, the the temperature and everything. I get into phases where when I discover a band or when I really get into a band, I will only listen to them for months. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's like completely sick of me, but... um. But I can so- <laughs> I, I kind of relate to that though, because me too. If like I really dig a song or a band, I cannot get, I cannot get over it that easily. Yeah, and so me, I got into BTS last at the at the fall last year, and so they have tons tons of music. Um, but they just released a new song a couple of weeks ago, a Japanese song called "Film Out." It's uh, it's really good. I really like it. The um, the lyrics are really powerful. I find also. So if you if you uh, YouTube the music video, you can put the closed captions on, and they'll you can have the the translations. The video is really beautiful, and this is a song that's going to be. Um, it's it's a collaboration with a Japanese band. It's for I think it's for a movie. So that's what I've been listening to. Number one, number two is April seventh from the main. Um, this song just released last week as well. Um, and, uh, this is, uh, John's like a love song that he wrote and it's, uh, it's a kind of, a, it revolves around, uh, how his relationship, I think with his current, his wife started and, um, it's, a, it's a really cute song and it's, uh, I, I really like it too. The third song now is from a band called The Rose. It's a Korean, um, I'd say probably like indie pop rock band. Um, they 
so they have been inactive for the last year. A lot of a lot of these a lot of my uh, my su- my song suggestions also have really big stories behind them. But the Rose <laughs> they they've been um, inactive for the past year because they got into disputes with their label. And they're so they're trying to leave their label, but they're they're in like they're they're caught in legal battles right now. So they they haven't they released a song kind of independently uh, last summer called Black Rose that I really enjoyed, and I was gonna suggest that one. However, Black Rose, I think it was on Spotify and stuff for like a day, and then it was removed. <laughs> um, so you can find it on YouTube. But um, I I really like Sorry from the Rose. Um, it's just it's a really good song. The they have multiple vocalists, but the Wu Song, the one who starts the song, I I really like his vocals. His vocals are really uh, they're special. It's not the, the typical kind that you hear in mainstream Korean music. Yeah. So okay. those we, were mine. Yeah. So with all that, we have like all the spectrum of music. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Basically. It's fine. No. Are the Terroir? Not so close. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we got to know our guests a little bit, we're going to dive into the subject today. But before, um, let's ask a few more just like general questions. So how did you get into music? Um, how did you get into playing music? I would say like fr- from what I remember, I think I was watching um, Music Plus or some kind of like uh, MTV shows. And I remember seeing um, um, a TV show where people would like to become their favorite artist or something like that. So they had to like remake the video clip of an yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember yeah, yeah, yeah. how it was called, but I remember that episode, specific one. Um, they were trying to remake um, Blink 22's song, What's My Age Again, with like t- yeah, three dudes. And um, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was like it? so cool. Was that? <laughs> yeah. Did, did they I, I make remember. it? <laughs> because they, the one they're running naked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Exactly that one. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but I, for some reason, like I, I was digging the song so much, and I, before that, I already started playing guitar. I don't remember what. Oh yeah, my my um, sixth grade teacher. Uh, was playing guitar uh but like to teach it was like a very cool way to, of teaching and i really got I, I was really admiring that so i asked my father just like how i would like to to, to play guitar and he was kind enough to like buy me a get uh, an acoustic guitar so this is where i started learning like the basics like the chords and stuff and mm-hmm. I, I, I was really not that good uh and to start somewhere Yes, yeah. exactly. But I was 12, to be fair. <laughs> it's fine, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so, and then I saw that uh, that TV show and I started trying to pick pick up the song, What's My Age Again? And then I had two friends, uh, which are still my friends uh, today. Um, they're twins and one received a, a drum for Christmas and the other one, the other one, a bass. How so convenient. <laughs> we thought, Hey, let's, let's make a band. And well, so we, we just like try to play what's my again over and over. And this is my first, uh, like band experience, even though we were not a band, we were just like jamming out. Mm-hmm. And, um, but this is like at the, the very moment I thought, Oh, this is like so cool. I, I remember having the goosebumps when we all started playing the riff and we were lucky because we were the three not so talented musician, but at least when we kind of understood naturally the the, beat. the rhythm and stuff. Yeah. For some people, it's really hard to get. Uh, but we were just stuck with like the technical. We we didn't needed to practice, but at least it was just like so natural to play the song and like all blend the three of us together. So hmm. I remember having the goosebumps and thinking, wow, this is the best thing ever. And since then, I, I, I got stuck into music quite a lot. I've did oh. like a lot of mini things, but it, everything always came back to music since then. Oh, that's cool. So at least you, like you said, you start somewhere, you have a, a good start with a teacher, like you, you had someone to show you and 
people to, and to inspire me. To, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Right. And who, who are your biggest influences? Um, well, that for sure, Blink. Blink is definitely like one of my <laughs> biggest influences. <laughs> 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 But then, uh, I mean, I've listened to a lot of mu other musicians uh, or music bands. So I have a lot, but like, yeah, I would say like Blink, Bon Iver, Ziggy Albert, a lot, uh, Seed and Color, Dallas Green, like mm -hmm. big, big uh, music influence. Um, to name a few, I would go with them, but like so much more. Bob Marley, Bob Marley. Wow. Once <laughs> summer comes, oh, that's my vibe. But yeah, so a lot. Uh, a little bit of uh, everything, huh? Yes, kind of, kind of. I love like, yeah, I would say like mostly reggae music, folk music, punk music. And lately I've been into lo-fi quite a lot. And I really dig that uh, kind of music too. So yeah, it's very large. All over the place. But I yeah. mean, I feel like that's, that's the, the people who are only influenced by one thing, they're, they're more likely to get kind of stuck into just one thing and then not really grow as an yeah. artist. But that was others. my case. I would say when I was like 17, 18, I was only listening to pop punk music. Like I was not interested at all by anything else than that. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of that, I got to understand like catchy melodies, uh, basic core progressions. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of stopped growing as a like musician at some points because like all the technical stuff uh i i couldn't get it so when it, it was getting like too because like i think pump pop, pop punk music is like quite a thing but um for most of the band i was listening to it's quite straightforward it's all like about the music production that make it mm -hmm. sound like very large and and cool but technically i don't think it's like It's definitely not like John Mayer, for example, where it's like super technical and there, there's so many voicings and the chords. And so, yeah, I, I can uh, agree with uh, what you're saying. <laughs> and um, so how's it been going being a musician in the last year? In the last year, um, I would say it's been... I think I've been quite lucky because I found something that makes me happy about playing music, even though it was like kind of weird ish at the beginning, mm -hmm. especially like I was starting playing on Twitch and nobody really knows Twitch unless you're a gamer. So uh, for a lot of people mm -hmm. that were maybe already following me either like on Facebook and Instagram, well, I mean, They either like came to see what it was like or, or did not. But uh, so it, it, it was hard to build something around that. But it's been my safe space from day one. And uh, since it's my channel, I felt more that I, I had the right to do what I really wanted to play mm -hmm. compared to when I play, for example, in a restaurant or in a bar. Oh, right. I won't play some Taking Back Sunday, for example. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would play songs that most likely people may know, even though I'm trying like, to keep it to my... To your taste. Yeah, to my taste. Uh, it's like a compromise I'm trying to do. But like on my stream, I don't really do compromise. I, I really play what I feel like playing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think I... And even for like the, a lot of technical knowledge... Uh, this year has been like really good for me as a musician because um, I had to know like how to properly work with some gear, like the looping thing before the, the stream, I would, I've never done any looping. Mm -hmm. so I, I kind of learned that, uh, learning how to play some better bass riff because if it's always like too straightforward, it's not really interesting after, after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, So, yeah, I think like, like overall, I think I grew as a musician probably more than I did when I was just playing in bars and restaurants over and over. Because at some point it was, it was just like me going there, playing, 
going back home and not really improving anything. Right. Right. It, it, would you say that it's helped you to get people because you don't have like noise reaction? I don't know how to, to name it. You don't it, get like, direct feedback at a yeah. restaurant versus uh, on Twitch, Yeah, right? totally. Uh, well, actually, the difference is when I, I'm in a restaurant and I don't get really feedbacks, I can, I can play a song and look at the people and see who is like... Paying attention. Yeah, paying attention or... Just singing along, but mm. not really looking at you. But I, I can read on the lips, and that gives me an idea on like even if I don't have any any feedbacks, that gives me an idea on okay, maybe when I do those kinds of songs, there are more people that tends to sing along. So I'll try to like to to get that direction for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but on stream, people like they request some tunes. And I have a list of tunes that I already know, so they can like request those songs. So it's it's easier for me to um, to build up my set list of the night versus in a restaurant where I kind of try to read the room, mm -hmm. but it's not always so easy. <laughs> and so you you really you started streaming. Um, we we talked a little bit before we started uh, the episode. So you you started recording a, streaming a little bit before uh, the pandemic. And why? How did you decide that when the pandemic hit that this was going to be something that you were going to put more time into that you were going to kind of do full time? I decided that uh, last October, I would say. Okay. Um, so. Even like during the first time of the pandemic, I was, I was quite going all in, but uh, I wasn't sure if I really liked it. It mm -hmm. took me a couple of streams to like be comfortable because the first streams, the first at least 50 or 100 stream, you just keep on running into technical issues. Like, <laughs> and you no don't worse. know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. now I, I, I remember started getting anxious during the stream because either my computer would lag on something or there are some comments that were thrown that I didn't know how to stop. So like getting to know the platform, the gear you're using, um, being confident about the sound you're sending, the video you're sending. Well, that takes a lot of time. And you can easily get discouraged about like this. And there's also the work behind being live because you practice, you, you, you try to make your stream more interactive, building a community on Discord, for example. So like I had to get to know what is Discord, how can I use <laughs> it so mm -hmm. I can talk to people when I'm offline or so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to create content when you're offline as well. So people can still listen to you, even though mm -hmm. you're not live. Um, so that has been um, a, a lot of work. And um, at some point I thought, well, I'll just wait for the pandemic to end and then I'll go back to the gigs. But like when uh, in October, I think it was the first month where I could say that I could really fully pay my bills with Twitch. Wow. And oh, from nice. that instant, I thought, okay, I think it's worth it. I'll just like give it a shot, go all in with that. And mm -hmm. then we'll see. And since then, um, it, uh, I, um, I started like having a schedule that I try to like really respect weekly, mm -hmm. every mo Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 PM. Um, I go live no matter what. And since then, It, it, it just has been a uh, benefit for me uh, that way. And, and how hard it was to stand out and get like yeah. following and a community around you? Um, there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a luck factor that you cannot um, predict, especially, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, raids. So yeah. mm -hmm. that, that the raids helped me a lot. And uh, I mean, yeah, you it, can... Sorry, just for people that don't know what is a raid, it's with another Twitch person send all this community to one person. So it's like a gift. You, you give, yeah, kind of. You, you give exactly. some viewers to someone, like, check yeah. this guy, and everyone goes to raid the... the and yeah. I mean, so, like, this is, this is so good for everyone. Like, even, like, 
after all of my stream, I always rate another streamer that I either discovered, I know, or sometimes it could be my moderators that uh, they just highly suggest, oh, we should like check this dude out. Mm -hmm. Either it could be a streamer that has like the same amount of person of, that I have, or it could be a smaller streamer just so we help uh, this person grow like some streamer helped me so much growing lately there's a streamer mm -hmm. uh, from germany she has always around like between four and six thousand people watching her stream like okay. live mm -hmm. and she's been sending me her people maybe three or four times in like since the beginning of the year that makes such a difference because i'm live and within two minutes i get let's say like 4,000 people seeing me playing songs. And then from that, normally I get around 600 follows. So that's that, nice. that really wow. helps. Wow. Yeah, that's really nice. And yeah. I think as a viewer, it's really more fun and engaging than, oh, I will look at this guy on his, for example, Bandcamp or whatever, because you're live. When, when yeah, I click, there's I, I there's see. a direct connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, that's what I love about streaming. Cause and this is what I try to do. I, I try to greet the more people that I can. Like even if someone pops up, pops in in the chat and say just like hi, well, I'll, I'll try to have some sort of interaction with that. Yeah, that person. So I feel like that's like some people. That's what they want and that's what's going to keep them coming back it's like oh you know this person actually acknowledges that i'm here um so i'll i'll, I'll come back and support yeah. them yeah the cool thing about twitch or live streaming i think also is there's a lot of um, introverted uh, viewers people that don't feel comfortable uh, like going in a bar or in a festival mm -hmm. because they don't like crowded space and I think it's a safe space for everyone to just like make friends from all over the world, uh, <coughs> share thoughts, uh, and like just vibe basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, you get to know a lot of like very bright, intelligent and kind people out there. And this is the thing I, I love the most about it. And so I'm not very familiar with the music community on Twitch. So I'm, I'm personally, I don't watch uh, a lot of streamers at all, just because I'm the type of person that when I'm watching something, I want to be a hundred percent there. Yeah. I'm not the type like my 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 boyfriend will always have his stream on the side. He's watching gamers on the side always in the background. That's kind of like as background noise. Yeah. But I'm not the type of person who can do that. Like if I'm if I'm watching something, I don't want to miss it anything. I'm the type <laughs> of person that if you're watching something with me and um I missed a sentence, I will want to rewind because I'm like, <laughs> I just missed something. Um so that's why I'm not I, I never really got into streamers that much. But yeah. so I know the gaming side of Twitch through my boyfriend. Yeah. But what's the music community like? It's still very small, I would say. Um, but um, I think, like to me, it's the best because everyone or almost everyone is so chill, so kind, so helpful. I talk with a lot of streamers where we share knowledge. Um, if I have a question, well, I and there's a streamer that does some sort of thing that I think it's cool, but I kind of want to do it something similar i mm -hmm. i can just like write to him and, and like just before launching the call i was talking with an amazing streamer uh from canada she's she's got a lot of originals she's she's so good and she just wrote me about like oh um for the guitar how did you get like that kind of sound so i just like shared with her okay so this is a set i'm using for the guitar uh to mix my guitar and yeah it's just like uh it's a community we share uh, mm -hmm. ideas so we can all benefit from it and grow because i think that if music become uh, be, ever become a thing on twitch um we're all gonna benefit from it i'm not gonna uh, get less viewers because i told someone oh uh this, this is, is how, how you, you, you may you'll sound better if you sound that way i mean mm -hmm. it, it's it's so much more than just like the the 
content and the 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 music quality you're proposing it's it's a lot about uh, personality interaction you have with yeah. the people how your stream is interactive uh, how you manage everything when you're off stream there's like so much factor that makes a difference between if your stream might work or not or mm -hmm. not as much and there's luck as I said, I think luck <laughs> is yeah, uh, something you I, cannot I, really predict. But I, I'm pretty sure luck is always somewhere because you need luck sometimes just to yeah. be at the right place or do exactly. the right song at the right moment to get discovered. But or you also, I think uh, I also think you create your own luck, mm -hmm. meaning yeah, like yeah. you can be very lucky. But if you never stream, you stream like once a month, you really have to be lucky to get like that massive rate. But if you stream let's say 12 hours per week well you you've get you've got more chance to um to Benefit so people from, see you and uh get really noticed yeah so yeah so i think it's a balance between everything but um yeah is, is there any similarity between what you you're doing in, on twitch and an actual show a live show uh i think it's quite different because on a live show uh, oftentimes when I go, if I do a set of like 45 minutes or an hour, most likely it's going to be like an hour mashup where I start from a song and I just like don't stop to mm -hmm. talk or I, I'm not really talkative when I, when it gets to shows, uh, especially in restaurant and bar could be a bit different if there's like an actual interaction, but on stream, um, the difference is I take more time to build loops, uh, to talk with people, mm -hmm. uh, to, yeah, to ask them how they're doing or just like to try some different version of songs as well, which is not a thing I used to do on live show. On live show, I, I just like go straight forward. I try to save the more time, like the more empty space time that I can, Yeah, where there's either no sound or like I, I i don't really loop that much even uh, when i'm live i started doing it a bit but um it doesn't sound as good as on on stream because on on stream it's always sounding the same but in a live show the difference is uh well depending on the 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 sound system mm -hmm. of the place the room uh, it, it it can sound very poor and bad so it's less predictable Yes, uh, I, I've listened a couple of streams, like I said at the beginning of yours, and I was quite impressed by your multitasking because I saw you start a song, did one loop, a second loop, stop, talk, respond to someone, uh, ask something to your moderator, add two or three loops, stop again, <laughs> answer to someone. Uh, yeah, I, I saw it because I think you had a problem with uh, uh, the drops. Uh, because people want to uh, request song with oh, drops, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, and you, in the middle of the, of the, of it, you just stop, ask some question, do, did some change in your setting, and yeah. continue like nothing happened. And uh, okay, as a musician, <laughs> just doing loops it's quite something because you don't want to lose your tempo and you want to be into it. And you were like, like there was no problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I will fix that. Another loop. I will fix that. Another loop. Switch instrument. <laughs> That's what's really, really impressive to see. But that, yeah. Well, that that's a uh, connected to what I said a bit earlier. Like the first fifty or hundred stream, you always run into technical issues. But like even now, I'm close to two hundred streams or so, and I still run into technical issues. The mm. difference is, most likely, I would know what is what the problem is. Or if I don't, uh, I don't stress real, that much anymore about it unless it's like very a big deal, like a sound glitch that comes from wherever. But if it's <laughs> like uh, in that case, I mean, what well, like uh, it, it was not, I was not really get, getting anxious about it, which would have been really different a year ago. I would have like just like freaked out probably mm -hmm. and <laughs> closed the stream. So that that kind of brings me into like another question, which is we asked about the similarities with live shows, but 
what do you think this whole experience has brought you as a musician that you can bring back to live shows or even to your own music uh, creations? Um, I think that uh, from now on, I'll be maybe a bit more picky about the gigs I'll be saying yes to. Okay. Since now I have come like that business, online business that I that I that I've built. So I think I can afford to choose a bit more of the gigs I want to do or not. Mm -hmm. um, I think I there's more technical like gear that I can use or optimize to have a cool looping set up uh, for live shows. This is the next step I would like to have to 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 use on live shows. Um, I, I think I know more songs than I used to <laughs> as well. So maybe a larger um, repertoire. Repertoire, yeah, exactly. And also what that brought me is down now, I think I'm better cast, if that and it makes sense. So the, meaning, um, for, uh, I'll, I'll send you an example. Like, I think it was two or three years ago, someone booked me for a corporate event. So um, for business thing. And once I got there, they told me, okay, so it's um, the, the theme of uh, our night is country. So can you just like play some country music only for three hours? Oh, I know like two country songs. Yeah, oh. no, no, so, nothing prior. Like, you, you got in and they asked you to build oh, a stage. Yeah, exactly. So like basically they hired me, but they didn't, they didn't know what I was doing at all. Mm. And so that was the worst night ever for oh, me, and probably so, for them. How, how many songs but, did you play? <laughs> to be fair, I played like Walk and Will, and then I, I played some rendered stuff. <laughs> I, I don't remember what I did, but I was supposed to play three hours. After an hour and 15 minutes, I just said, well, I'm done for tonight. So I, <laughs> I, I put a Spotify playlist, country oh. playlist, of course. <laughs> and then I rocked my gear. And I felt ashamed. That was <laughs> uh, that was the worst. Oh. But yeah, I mean, I think that now that people know a bit more what, about what I'm doing, either on stream or I even use a few things to like has posts either on Instagram stories or, or Facebook. So I, I, I feel like people know a bit more about what kind of music in, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And probably the, if they hire me, it's because they know what they want. And like last, I remember last summer, someone hired me for a private party when like those 10 people party. I, I, I did some, <laughs> that, that, oh yeah. At first it looked like a very bad idea, but it ended up that people would hire me because either like for one example, someone hired me because he saw my emo stream okay. and this is what he wanted. Like with his friends, they wanted only pop punk emo songs. And it was the best freaking night ever, like of the summer from like of me playing gigs and playing songs that I actually like mm -hmm. and that they love. So yeah, I think maybe the stream will bring me that, uh, that better casting of myself. But, okay. That's cool. And so... What do you think Twitch can improve on for the musicians who want to stream or even just any streamer in general? Um, I think lately they've been trying to give a, um, like better uh, visibility to uh, the, the music Twitch streamer, like um, especially giving some streamer a front page. So that helped mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, lately, they've been working on uh, having a music ambassador for the um, Twitch streamers as well. Um, I think um, they could have improved the DMCA, like the copyrights um, thing. Yeah, it, it's been a uh, it's been a huge uh, struggle for a lot of music stre streamer that has that used to have some strike, but. I don't think the music streamers has been that much uh, into trouble with their channel because of that, because it's still so small compared to the, um, the gamer. gamer, the gamers. Mm -hmm. I think they're the ones who had more struggle with that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but it's hard to say. I'm not really aware of like how they're working on that. Mm. Um, I just think uh, they, they they should maybe like put more effort because I feel like a lot of people would maybe switch to YouTube if if you don't get like better viewership. I I, I think mm -hmm. like there's so many musicians out there on YouTube that if I think it's just like easier to just think, oh, I'm just gonna live stream on YouTube then. But um although I I think they have some pretty good tools to build a community that is really engaged. So I don't know. But I'm I feel like they might be losing money on the music side versus hmm. the gaming side. So I really don't know where this stands uh on this. But um and you you mentioned YouTube. Why did you go to Twitch when you decided that you were going to stream rather than, let's say, YouTube? Or I think people stream on Facebook also. Yeah. Well, at first, I um, I wanted to try out a new platform. And um, since the Facebook, for example, the Facebook algorithm, uh, they keep throwing me in the algorithm of Quebec. But mm. I think that like the kind of music that I'm doing, some people like like it. But in in Quebec, what works the best is like the basic chansonnier Quebecois songs, mm -hmm. like uh playing Jean those Jean kind of, style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like totally. That works so well. And I, I really get that. But um I didn't think um my reach would have been as good on Facebook than potentially on another platform where, where I can reach people from er, anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. So what I thought is I'll try to build a community on Twitch on Facebook. I'll just keep the sponsored uh, stream, which makes more sense. So if I'm sponsored by a restaurant, uh, it's better if I play on their Facebook page because mm -hmm. it's going to reach their clients or um, versus on Twitch. If I reach people from Russia, well, it's not good for them, really. No. Uh, yeah. So. Sure. Sure. And, and oh. no, go ahead. So do you have any advice for people who want to get into this? Uh, yeah, that would be like, just do it for real. It's It sounds super cheesy, but uh, do it. Try to have a schedule. Respect your schedule, but respect your... your uh, um, your limits. Your limits too. Yes. Don't try to grow too fast. Um, and exp like the sooner you start, I mean, you'll learn through this. I've I've been learning so much, but so much on like so many things, and it's it's okay not to be. Uh, I'll probably be uh, like way uh, better or like uh, comfortable with the tools in. A year or two and it's fine but uh you everyone has to start somewhere so if you want to do it do it if you like it just keep on doing don't don't stop because you don't get the the viewership you're expecting mm -hmm. it's normal i i didn't have any viewer attendance like my 50 something streams like few friends from like anywhere but um yeah the more you do it i the rest will come, I guess. And yeah. If if I can do a segue on that, how did you get to have your whole moderators and team behind you? Because I saw that you have a designer, you have a, uh, I don't know, I don't remember his name, Knight something. He's your moderator. And yeah, well, um, so uh, for the design, um, well, my my gr girlfriend is a graphic designer, so that helps oh. a lot. She, <laughs> helped, she she did pretty much anything. Shout, everything. shout out to her. <laughs> shout out, big shout out to her. Um, uh, also, I mean, like in the, um, the community, we have like so many talented person, like from everywhere. And for, so, so for example, for some emotes, they're a viewer that she's a, also a graphic designer. And she just like, like this, she sent me some, a doodle of like many ideas she just drew and it was fantastic. It was so beautiful. So nice. So wow. my girlfriend just took it and, um, she made it like more consistent with the actual look we're trying to give mm -hmm. without like 
changing the the emotes that much. And uh, so that's just someone being nice and someone who wants to be part of that journey and part of that community. Um, for the moderators, um, the first one is someone who just suggests me, oh, I can help you out a bit if you want to, because he was always on my stream. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't have any knowledge about like the, all the comments and stuff. So he told me, well, well while you're streaming, I could, ma I can manage that, create some comment and uh, help you out with that. So he, he helped me. Then um, we started having a bit more viewership and those people, like, I mean, like they have a life, they work, they, they cannot be always there. So uh mm -hmm. we were we were looking for some uh people that are always into the stream and we would just like ask them hey would you be down to um uh, moderate the stream you don't have to like it's not a job but like since you're always here would you mind just like helping Checking out a bit out. with uh yeah. or just like banning the sometimes you get some jerks like on yeah. <laughs> anywhere in the internet so sometimes mm -hmm. you might you need to like just quickly ban some people just to make sure the, the bad vibes are not taken uh, over the place mm -hmm. uh, but it's it doesn't happen that much often but um this is why a moderator is is it's really important it, yeah. yeah and so now we uh i think we are i we have seven or eight moderators and so oh. we have our chats weekly we just talk they suggest some ideas about the stream, uh, some songs, some um, way to make everything more uh, fluent, like mm -hmm. smoother. So, um, yeah. I, oh, no, go finish. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just saying that's that's pretty much it. It started up with someone helping me and then we kind of recruited <laughs> other uh, <laughs> see and so i don't know um i'm like i said i'm not really that well versed in the twitch uh universe um but i was wondering so usually when they you have these moderators are they doing this on a volunteer basis or are you paying them how does this work they're doing this on a volunteer basis okay i see but i mean I they're they're there anyways so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And um, so when 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 you said you started, you didn't have any viewers. How how was how did that feel at the beginning? Um, to be fair, I didn't really know how Twitch were working, so I I had no way to see if there was actually people watching. <laughs> I couldn't even get to read the chat. Like literally, I started streaming on Twitch, but I didn't know Twitch. So mm -hmm. I just like went on Google and uh, I Googled like OBS and stuff like the the the, 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 the um, streaming software that I need to use. And I just like created a Twitch account, launched the stream and and vibed. <laughs> which which I, like, part of that? For real, I, 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 I remember um, watching back because you can watch back like your stream or the VOD. So I used to do that just like to see, okay, what can I improve or mm -hmm. some stuff. And I remember I watched back one of the stream that I, I had my very first raid of like a hundred or something people. And I didn't mention anyone or anything because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what a raid was. So I just oh. looked super rude to everyone. Oh. <laughs> they were like, hey, you're getting raided by a very like known streamer and like just So what? <laughs> just say, just say hi or something. And but I, I didn't know. So oh. I just looked really rude. So uh I don't know. To me, like uh, the the first stream uh when you stream and there's five people and then the next stream, there's, let's say 10 people, it already feels like, oh my God, there's so many people watching my stream. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it doesn't escalate, uh, escalate um, too quickly. It's, it's very, very smooth. Mm -hmm. So you get 10 and then uh, 12, then 20, oh, then down to 15 and then up a bit. So yeah it's not like a like on facebook it was different because i remember my first stream my first sponsor stream there were like four or five hundred people oh, wow oh. and the more i was doing it less people were watching because uh. 
it was a thing at the very beginning. But then also the algorithm of Facebook changed so bad uh, within the last year. So it, it, and a lot of people started streaming too. So mm. it's it's it became really hard to reach uh, people. A lot of people. I, I think, but some people started doing it very well and they actually build up a community on Facebook. But uh, I didn't um, experiment that. So I have a special request. Yeah. I want to hear your Tom DeLonge impersonation. <laughs> I, I'm not really, I, I'm not actually good at it, but it's just, it's, it's just a, a joke I started doing uh, while singing uh, I Miss You because like they're both singing their part. And when it comes the Tom DeLonge part, it's like so obvious that it's mm -hmm. Tom DeLonge. So mm -hmm. sometimes I, I, I just started doing this a bit lately and i think I, like there are other streamers that started doing this too and i think it's just funny but it's not going to be like really that good so please guys don't expect anything very nice <laughs> but it's just me doing the let's say I, I i'm not even sure we're gonna hear the guitar here but so let's say play the chords oh we hear it a little bit yeah, yeah. where are you and I'm so sorry, I cannot sleep, I cannot dream tonight. Something like that. Like just over saying the words, and <laughs> some weird pronunciations. So yeah, I'm just I, saying, it's not even a good impression. It's just trying to be Tom. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's because you're he, he always having a chewing gum. So that's why you're singing <laughs> that way. What's that? It, because he always are we having a chewing gum when he's singing. Oh yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's because you have to like push it somewhere to sing. So it's, it's always looked like he's, uh, he's eating the, he's, the mic. He's looking for his tone. Yeah. yeah that's funny. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So I think that about wraps up uh, what we had. No, um, no. We have a little surprise for him. Don't oh. run away. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't forget. Oh, no. Uh, no, that's true. You, you have um, to show your screen. So the little backstory here. Um, I invited Judy onto the podcast because I had, you know, we were, we were Facebook friends, but, um, we hadn't really been in touch for like 10 years. Um, but then recently I saw his, uh, his state champs, uh, cover, which is really good. You guys just, you should all check it out. Um, and that reminded me like, Oh, Hey, we could invite him onto the podcast because he's, he's doing this, uh, this really cool thing. And when I, uh, invited him. That's when I was like, I think I have pictures or at least a picture with him from when he was in a local band called uh, Call Me Doctor um, in 2009, 2010. So I went back into my Facebook archives and dug up this really <laughs> embarrassing photo. Let me see. Uh, I can't share a screen. You know, he didn't allow me to share a screen. I had to do that. Uh, whop, whop. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, but can, can you send it to me over um, over uh, um, Facebook? I, I can maybe open it like I did uh, earlier with the uh, uh, webcam oh, thing. Oh, okay, because you're, you're using UB, OBS, OBS right now. OBS, yeah. yeah. Okay, wait. Yeah. Let me, I'm using like, let me uh, send that over. What's embarrassing photo of Lily think, 12 years ago. I, I really ago. want to see it because I'm really wondering what what is the picture. Your hairstyle? I, I, I wonder if I'm going to remember what show specifically it was because we didn't do that okay. much shows. I sent it. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. No <laughs> way. Okay. I, I, I'm pretty what? sure this was at Café Lenko. Oh, nice. <laughs> This is your hairstyle. I, I think it's, Every, it's super cool, though. Whoa. Uh, so that was I a think vibe. This was, um, I'm wearing the Ocean Buried shirt. So this was when you guys played a show with the Ocean yes. Buried, yes. Um, which, is a, which was a small ca Canadian band from, um, I think they were from Ontario or no. Were they, were they from the Plains? I, oh, I think there was a band, um, Crisis Chain. Crisis Chain. They were from Winnipeg. Yes, I can't believe they they drove to get to that kind of gear yeah. with freaking ten people, yeah. full van. Like that time we had, like we 
we had to use like proper cab, proper like use like guitar amps and stuff. Today, it's not a thing we're still doing, but we had to carry the, they had to carry their old drums, mm-hmm. their whole monitoring that. Oh my God. All the way. Yeah. It's probably, it was probably, yeah, it's probably you, um, the Ocean Buried and Crisis Jane. It was probably something like that. You guys Oh, did. and I think there was a, a band called, uh, was it Modern, Modern Ghost? Modern Ghost. Oh, they were doing an yeah. acoustic set because the drummer couldn't make to, make it to the gig. And I, I remember the, sing, the singer being so pissed about it. So oh. he was like very moody, like playing his song and oh, oh man. there should be a drum solo there. But uh, yeah, drummer's <laughs> but, not But here. he's not there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, ghetto at ghetto little um, venue in Montreal, uh, 2009. The this venue that was like so small had carpet. Yeah. wasn't really well heated in the winter. <laughs> oh yeah, that was oh we it was in winter. Damn. I don't know if that was in the winter or not, but I remember going to shows in the winter and freezing and having yeah. to keep my jacket on even inside. <laughs> Um, so, (laughs) so yeah, so that was a little blast from the past, (laughs) um, with our fully, uh, MySpace looks. Um, oh yeah, that's big time. With my bangs. Oh Oh, man, that hair of yours. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Your hair are particularly like into it. Like I'm pretty sure you were having more time in front of a mirror than your mother just to be sure. That's for sure. Everything was perfect. For sure. <laughs> ah, man. Yeah. So I think now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> On that beautiful picture. We're on the show. Um, I want to, we want to thank you, Julien, for coming on to our, our podcast. It thank was you. really interesting you, yeah. uh, learning about uh, the life of a music Twitch streamer. And um if you want, you, this is where you can promote all your socials. Go ahead. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, I would say Twitch. Follow me on Twitch, please. <laughs> uh, I, can I, do I have this? Oh, my God. Oh. 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 Look, so look, professional. I was not even prepared for that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you, you, Twitch is the, the, the place where I'm playing like three times a week. It's a very nice place. I love it. So, if you're uh, curious about it, just come over. Say hi in the chat, and um, yeah, I would say that. Otherwise, uh, YouTube, I, I try to like create content a bit. Uh, soon, I'm gonna start posting some uh, songs uh, or live performance that I recycle from Twitch on YouTube, and um, yeah, Instagram. That's pretty much it. That's all I, I, I got to promote right now. Seriously, <laughs> I, I encourage people to at least try it once because it's really fun. It just uh, yesterday was a uh, folk uh, fireplace. Folk Wednesday, yeah. And seriously, it really feels like it. Like people were chatting, exchanging with you. Uh, your set list is pretty much like bang on, like 2010 <laughs> folk song. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do as well on Twitch. Because uh, before I used to just like open the stream and let's go. We just uh, request anything you like. And I started doing some themed stream, which Mm -hmm. is a thing I really like. So on Monday, I only play emo pop punk songs. On Wednesday, I play folk songs. And on Friday, it's more like a chill uh, sunset vibe. Um, I'm thinking about like maybe switching for like more reggae vibes on on Fridays. So um, yeah, we're we're trying to keep like those team nights, Mm -hmm. uh, which is fun because if you're really dig the emo songs yeah but don't really care about the the rest then you have your like day your you're know, just joining and it's it's super cool no. i think um, i think it's a really good idea oh well thanks so far it's been it's been cool and i think yeah uh it shows up in the the stats that it made a difference at least for me that it doesn't mean that would work for every everyone but uh mm-hmm. for me it's it was a path that i say oh I'll try this, and um, so far, it's fun. Yep. And like Francois said, so I, I caught the end of your Monday stream while I was uh, cooking dinner after work. Okay, and, yeah. Um, so I also really, I found it really interesting. It was really cool to, to it was really cool to see you create the those loops. Mm. Thanks. So yeah. definitely go check him out. Um, and 
also come and check us out on our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we're going to release, we still release episodes every two weeks. So this was Sparkling Harmonies. We're your hosts, Lily. And Francois. And we had our guest Julien here today to talk. And so we'll, you can hear us next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.